Good evening, folks. Hope everybody's doing well. So, tonight we're going through your Market Maker Series Lecture 2. It's been one month since I uploaded your Lecture 1. And in Lecture 1, I gave you the topics which we will be studying in this whole series. Now, just to give an overview, the Market Maker model is not for everyone. But the knowledge I'll be sharing here is for everyone because in this lecture I will give you the knowledge how to use the PDRAs, what are the PDRAs, how to understand them and what's the logic behind them. Now here's the thing, when you come into the markets you see every single candle as a PDRA. As a beginner trader everybody's been there. This lecture just try to understand how I will guide you to identify the correct PD race, how to get the right bias, and trust me, once you start seeing this, you can never unsee it. So, using that as a statement, let's start the lecture properly. So, in your lecture one, which was the month one, I gave you some topics, which were here, which were basics of previous knowledge, Introduction to market maker models, steps of understanding them, how market works on algorithmic price delivery. Now for some folks, this might be something extraordinary. For some folks, it might be just a normal statement. But here is a nugget. I said time importance. Now, there was a podcast of Trader Day who basically introduced quarterly theory. In that podcast, they talked about how price is on X and Y axis. So on your X axis, you basically have your time. And on your Y axis, you have your price. Now what does that mean? Think of your charts as graphs. Now candles, they look like graphs. You have your premium, you have your discount. Now. In those ranges, the market has some algorithmic deliveries. It will be programmed at midnight. That's why there is a midnight open, also known as true open in my quarterly theory video. At midnight, the algorithm decides when will be the high and when will be the low of the day. Now, this is some interesting information. I caught your attention, right? Now, there's so much more information you will learn later on in these lectures. And trust me, when we go straight down to cycles based on macros, time-based gaps, if the ranges, core content, and market primer lecture, you guys will love it. It's more to understand mentally than for me to give you something like, okay, this is your chart, this is how you market every single time. That's not the point of these concepts. Here's the thing which I teach every time. If you truly learn the PD race, like truly, you just sit down, you just focus on the PD race. You have nothing else to do. You're looking at order blocks. You're just studying again and again and again order blocks. You have your hundreds of trade recaps just using order block. You will start seeing a pattern. You will start seeing the same bodies, the same wicks, repeating at least more than five or six times. And that's the thing I'm telling you. If it's not algorithmic, it can't be that precise. Now, getting back to the lecture, because in this lecture, I want to just keep things focused more on your learning rather than me explaining it to you and trying to guide your psychology. Because the lecture one was purely done to help you with psychology and you have to refer to this code again no psychology video will ever help you if you're not working hard and self-accountable person now how many of you when I said you have to watch when I mention you guys you have to watch ICT's lecture videos core content month 4 I mentioned here how many of you watched that? Now, I don't want to give 
a statement here, but I know for a fact more than half of you never even bothered watching it. 20 to 10% did watch one or two videos and then left. Now you're looking at yourself, you're like, oh, he got me. How does he know? I know. And 10 to 15% watched it, made notes, and they texted me. I know the people who text me on Instagram. I can feel from their text that they're actually putting in the work. Because once you're actually putting in the work, you're like, you're making notes, you start seeing things, you start to smile. You're like, oh, it was in front of my eyes this whole time and I couldn't see it. And that's the beauty. Because then you see that it was so easy this whole time, I just didn't focus. And the focus is what you all are lacking. You try chasing models, whereas everything you have to work on is on yourself. You have to be perspicacious. You have to be self-accountable. And you have to be hardworking. Now, lecture two starts here. In lecture two, we will be starting with basics. Order block, fair value gap, and breaker block. Now, for some folks, trust me, these three PDRAs is all you need in your whole lifetime. You can make hundreds of models just using these three. And if you think I'm just staying, saying a statement, well, you can find it out yourself if you truly put in the hard work. Now, here's how I'm going to teach it. I'm going to give you example, definition, huh. sorry, example, definition, and images. I won't show you it on chart. It's up to you. That's your homework. Remember, every single lecture I've taught you, did I open trading view once? Did I do that? There's a difference between teaching something and there's a difference between just guiding it. I'm here to teach you and every single word I'm telling you, you can imagine it. You can see it yourself. And once you see it yourself, this is when you start to remember it. Because you can watch thousands of videos of someone executing something on the charts. You won't learn anything. But if you watch that one time, two time, three time yourself, sitting there patiently in front of the chart, watching it, opening your notes, seeing it, marking it down, writing it down, you will learn Far more than a person who's just watching a video. <clears throat> and that's the difference. I'm still not well. I can't properly speak. But I'm still making this lecture. Why? Because I care for you all. I want you all to be profitable. I want my knowledge to be shared. <clears throat> okay. So now, back to the lecture. We will start off with order blocks. Now, what is is an order block. It's a block which provides temporary support for price to react off and make the price go higher and target any external or internal liquidity. Now for some folks, what is external and internal liquidity? It's just your swing highs and lows. If you have watched Core Content Month 4, it's the first video. Institutional highs and lows, institutional swing points. That's your liquidity. That's it. Now, one of the most important PDRAs you'll learn, the name indicates its role and function. Order block, order stands for orders. Block is just a block. You can see it as a block on your charts. Now, why do we call it order block? Because according to basic understanding, we can just imagine that it's a block where orders are placed and price comes down to it, picks up the orders, and then goes the opposite direction. That's a bullish scenario. Now, we go down to definition. Write these definitions down in your notes. Watch it two times, three times, every time there's a definition. Now, 
a down close candle or a series of down close candle before a big move up after a liquidity sweep is known as what? A bullish order block. Same goes for an up close candle or series of up close candle before a big move down after a liquidity sweep bearish order block. Now, what is the structure? How does it form? It forms after a swing low or a swing high is taken. In this case, this high you see, this high took out some old high on the left side. And then this last up close candle before a big move down. You see these three consecutive, three continuous down candles. What's that? Inside that is a fair value gap, which you will learn below. But for now, this is order block. Last up close candle, liquidity sweep and displacement. Price comes back, reacts to it, and then displaces lower, continues its trend. Now, a bearish bullet order block example is something like this on the charts. You have liquidity, which gets taken out. Price displaces up makes a high, comes down into your sell stops, takes out the sell stops, goes up. What's the difference between this rally up and this rally up? The difference is when we had this rally up, there was no fair value gap. Is there any clean fair value gap? You can see this is like a choppy price action. This is a choppy price action. You cannot call this as a market maker buy model or a unicorn model or any model in which you want to enter. But watch how these candles react from this fair value gap, which you will learn below again. These lows were your target. Price took these out. This was not a proper price delivery. We had lows here, lows here, lows here. There was too many sell side liquidity price had to take out. Now, once we took that out, notice how we had immediate displacement closed above the highs, above the fair value gap, leave another fair value gap, have order block here, watch the bodies. The wicks do the damage, the bodies tell the story. Wicks always do the damage and bodies tell the story. Now, this order block ad acted as a support and price touched it and gave you a nice one to two is to reward. Stop loss should be always below the swing low, which took out the liquidity. Now, did I just give you how to manage a stop loss? Yes. Now, there's another logic here. ICT Universe, we had a fair value gap here. We had a big displacement down. Why? Because the overall order flow was bullish. You had your market structure shift here. You had your displacement here. Order block, price respect that. So there's no need for price to come respect this again here. We should skyrocket from it. And you see how this candle kind of closed? It closed above the fair value gap. We will learn this later in the fair value gaps. Now, for a bearish example, let's say we had a buy side liquidity taken out. Price goes down, closes below the swing low. You see how we close below the swing low? with displacement, a fair value gap, price immediately comes up. Now, this is this is the point where you guys have to learn. If the fair value gap is valid, the price will come to it immediately. It, it will just, it will be a quick rebalancing of price and it will not close anywhere 50% above the fair value gap. Watch the order block. Again, aligns up with a fair value gap. Now here was a fair value gap. Price respected it and went up. Why? Because we already took out the sell side. The initial order is bearish. So price only went up to take out some buy side before going down to take out sell side. Liquidity. What is price always doing? Taking out liquidity. Some folks went short of that high. Their stop losses were here. When price broke this low, they thought this is gonna act as support price skyrocketed here a bit. 
took them out, trade in to favorably up, and then displaced lower. You see how we took out all these lows? How we showed no breaking when we displaced with this candle lower? Why? Because this was low resistance liquidity. Later in Market Maker Lectures, you will learn about this. Here's the example how to execute fair value gap. Not really clean price action, but this is how you can view as a choppy price. Once you have choppy price action, you can use this because you will not always have clean price action. And for some of you who want to trade every single move, price will look sometime like this. It won't always be this clean. Now there's something called mean threshold. <clears throat> the mean threshold is like a 50% of your order blocks, fair value gaps, wicks. So let's assume here, you see this down close candle black before this big move up. Mean threshold of this candle is somewhere here, right? The body. For mean threshold, we look at the bodies. These bodies close below the 50% of this order block. So for example, here, this is not a clean example, but you can see how we had a fair value gap, we closed below the fair value gap. So that was already an indication that price wants to go lower. So we broke what? We broke the 50% mean threshold of this fair value gap. Once we close here, we have disrespected this order box, 50% mean threshold, and then price goes more lower in the future. Now, watch carefully how we have order blocks. This was a bearish order block, last up close candle, big move down. We close above it. What does this become? A bullish, because every broken PDRA acts as a reverse then. It's just like sport broken into resistance or resistance broken into sport. That logic. Now, watch how this order block is respected here. You see the bodies, they're respecting the 50% of this order block. That's the mean threshold being accepted. Now, this was a detailed lecture just on order blocks. Watch this again. I chose this example for a reason because this is a choppy price action. And if you can understand on this, you can genuinely understand the price. Because when price does these moves, you can take your trades with your eyes closed. You just need to know the logic. I'm teaching you the logic of how the 50% works, how we have a fair value gap, how price takes out liquidity, and how we have rallies up to take out these equal highs, or these swing highs. Now, signature, an easy way to recognize is seeing an old swing low or high broken and price is moving in opposing direction. What do you mean by that? You see an old swing high or low is broken and we see price moving down. See the move going down? That's what we're talking about. The last up close candle before a big move down, the last down close candle before a big move. Big move up, it should be up, apologies. Now how to identify a high probability fair value gap? No, apologies, high probability order block. Now, a high probability order block will always have a fair value gap. Now, this has two scenarios. Either the price will be in a higher time frame fair value gap or the order block will have a fair value gap above it. What do you mean by that? Take this example. Order block, fair value gap above it. See, fair value gap above it. Price comes down, attracted towards it. This these lows here, these might be in some higher time frame fair value gap. So this move happened inside the higher time frame PDRA. This is the topic and this is the logic I'm teaching. When to expect these order blocks? Simple. You have time and you have price. Use the quarterly theory. Use the kill zones, which I've already taught. Time and price. Remember that. Now, complete model for order block I've given you above. Now, these are questions which you should ask yourself in your notes. Why are order blocks important? How to use them? 
how to identify and types of order blocks now types of order blocks see this order blocks different this order blocks different this order block this order block was different because price broke through it and it acted as a support then it became an inversion order block this order block with a small fair value gap price taps it just watch the bodies did the bodies close above the fair value gap no so there's different types of order blocks how price reacts in them you see how in this order block price goes above the order block just a bit but then we have a rally down because why fair value gap put your fib from the wick high to this low and see where's the premium and discount 50% of the range is here you should not short in a discount short in a premium now starting fair value gaps now fair value gaps is one of the most powerful PDRA in your models and any model if it's a proper model it will have fair value gaps the models which have fair value gaps have a high win rate now for some of you you will start going crazy now that okay let me just learn fair value gaps let's leave everything else you need to know that for a reason out of 20 30 pd rays i chose just these three for your basics and i'm teaching them in great detail why because these are the only things you need now fair value gap is the most important pd ray every single model requires fair value gap for it to be high probability why i just explained it a few minutes ago rewind the video hear it again because when market is going up it leaves some inefficiencies now you see this move when we were going up we left an inefficiency here a gap and you see this week it comes down into the fair value gap we touch the fair value gap then we continue going higher again we leave a gap price comes down fills the gap then rallies up so this is the thing when price is moving quickly and expanded quickly it leaves inefficiencies other words gaps now link this with what i taught in the order block lecture displacement of the high or low is taken you just have to learn it go back watch again where i'm teaching order blocks make it notes record my videos hear them every single day when you wake up hear them when you sleep hear them unless you're hearing these lectures again and again on repeat you won't understand and you won't be profitable that's the secret the amount of hard work you're putting you'll get the same result otherwise you're going to stay the same place where you were last year take this as a gift that you're learning this for free now structure structure of fair value gap is really simple we have three consecutive candles formed with displacement which leave a gap which later attracts price to fill it this is the same thing which I still taught in 2022 model all you need is fair value gap price touches it just enter now the logic behind that let's take the first example we saw in order blocks we had a swing low displacement through that how many candles one two three three consecutive down candles leaves a fair value gap oh we have an order block oh okay price comes to it immediately whoa that's something a plus should i take it yeah target the swing lows one to two risk to reward you stop loss at the highs is it too hard no now another example fair value gap price shoots up leaves a gap order block comes down fills it does it break it no do you have an order block yep why do we wick down there might be some small inefficiencies on some lower time frames which you can't see with your naked eye here there might be a fair value gap on a five second chart right around here inside this range when we were rallying up interesting right think of it this way now we cover that now high probability fair value gaps 
these are formed when higher time frame aligns and we have taken any kind of low or high. Use the same logic I've taught you in your quarterly theory and kill zones. In kill zones video, I've shown you 15 minute time frame, how we were taking out the highs, forming fair value gaps, and on lower time frame, we're finding entries. Interesting. Again, under the same example, three candles move down, leaves a fair value gap. Another fair value gap, inversion. So we will learn about inversions later in the video, but focus on this for now. You break a swing low, displacement, fair value gap, immediate rebouncing, and then we shoot down. See, this is how it will look when it's forming. Then we will have candles going up, rally down. <clears throat> now, when to expect high probability fair value gaps? Any high probability fair value gap will have the following key indicators. Forms in discount or premium of the range will have an order block near it. Just focus. Every example I've shown you above, they all had order blocks. Interesting, right? Put that in your notes. Take that as a nugget. I'm trying to guide you. Now, will it be formed by displacement? Yes, it will always have displacement. And that displacement will leave your value gaps. It will always take out some kind of internal sell side liquidity or buy side liquidity. We will always respect the fair value gap. Remember to always watch the bodies, not the wicks. It will always align with the higher time frame drawn liquidity and will always be formed in kill zone times. Now we go quickly to our types of fair value gaps. We have inversion, midway, institutional order flow in tree drill. Now for some folks in my quarterly theory video, I mentioned something called institutional order flow entry. Now for some of you, you will be smiling because it's in your notes. You are still wondering, what was it? I'll teach you now. This is a revolt. Now we start off with inversions. Price retraces back to the old unfilled fair value gap, paired with a new fair value gap, inversion FEG gives precision. Understand this. Now, you see this orange fair value gap. Price goes up, never touches it, but then we displace through it, we break it with speed and leave another fair value gap. Now these two are overlapping. Price comes up, there's a higher chance of price not closing above it now. The bodies will never close above it. This will be an A plus setup to short. And there's still again an order block here. What does it say? Last up close candle, big move down. Order block here, again price wicks into it. This is just me explaining, you can't just short on this black candle after the green one. You have to wait for price to come into it, then short. Now, midway is when you mark the 50% of the fair value gap. There is no fair value gap here. Price is already balanced. There's just one fair value gap. Break through a swing low and we mark the 50% and we see if the bodies are closing above the 50% or below it. And that's when you can like have a safe edge that price won't have a reversal here. Institutional order flow is simple. The bodies will never go above 25% of the fair value gap. It will always just close 25% inside the fair value gap. It might wick, but the bodies will never go above 25%. And it will just, it will be a quick rally down then. It will be a sudden, quick, and immediate price sweeps after that. Now, to the most interesting PDRA. Now, for some students who have, I had in my mentorship, 90% of them always struggle with breaker blocks and I never understand why. This is one of the easiest, but from my experience teaching it, most of the students struggle with it before learning it from me. And once they learn from me, then they start to see in an easy way. Now, on the internet, you won't see breaker block being compared to an N shape. Now, what do I mean by that? You will learn later in the video. Now, this is the most easy part, but it gets harder from here. Now, the breaker block is the most 
easy to spot PD rate, but at the same time, it's not easy, it's hardest for a beginner. Structure. It forms after a swing high and a swing low. And then breaks the swing low with a Fevali gap. Now, for some of you, you're like, ICT Universe, I don't understand what you just mentioned. That's why I'm using images now to guide you. Now, what do I mean by that now? I said it forms a swing high. Let's start it step by step. We are saying it forms a swing high and a swing low with displacement. We go down. Let's find a bearish example. Let's go with this one. Now, imagine I said the end pattern. You will see this again. Now, what do we see here? Swing high and then a swing low. Broken with displacement. Interesting, right? With a fair valley gap. Oh, we have a fair valley gap now. Hmm. Now, this is where you see the end shape. You see the start of the leg. See the end shape. This low, high, low, high end shape. You see, you take the end part here, the bottom of your end, this leg here. This becomes your breaker candle and it always aligns with the fair value gap. You can take this as a market structure shape leg or in easy words, some retail traders will take this as your support broken into resistance. You can use that logic. I'm using every word because for me, as long as you're understanding, it's okay for me to use any wording I want. You don't have to use breakable. You can just still use, okay, this was an old support. It was broken down. It's resistance now because there's a fair value gap here. As long as you can be profitable, Use the models, use the logic, but you have to give credit to ICT because these things were taught by him. Now, another example. We have a swing low, high, broken down, rally up with displacement with a fair value gap. Same thing repeats. You won't always have base, you can have bodies in here. But this is what a high probability breaker block looks like. We have liquidity on both sides. Price takes out one side liquidity, rallies up, takes out the other one, leaves a fair value gap, comes into the end shape. You see the end shape now. Watch this thingy going in the end shape. See the end shape. We come a fair value gap inside of here. We take it now. And that's how you identify breaker blocks. A high probability breaker block will always have a fair value gap and auto block inside it. Okay, let's just find it out. Whoa, last down close candle before a big move up. Auto block. Oh, there's also a fair value gap inside this breaker block. Hmm, interesting. Let's check another example. Last up close candle, big move down, fair value gap. Oh, auto block and fair value gap paired up with a breaker block. This looks like an A plus setup to me. Now, right then, you know, that was your nugget. <clears throat> now, a few things related to breaker blocks. It will always form inside a higher time frame FVG. It, was always, it will always have an SMT with a second low marked as point B. Now, this sell side liquidity is your point B. Here, you will have an SMT. For example, on NASDAQ, we took out this low. On SPX, we failed to take out this low. We made a higher low SMT. This will also be used as a unicorn model, and ICT loves unicorn models. <laughs> he really loves unicorn models. Now, all of your basics are done. Congratulations. You have watched Core Content Month 4. You have revised it just now with a bit more deeper understanding. This is how I teach. Now we focus on the main parts of Market Maker model. Oh, some of you are getting excited now. Relax. We will go through it. First, you have to learn more. With me, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to make notes a lot. And this is how you learn. This is the only way you can learn. If you know what you're looking for, you will find it very much more quicker. 
instead of just keep looking at it like you don't have clue what you're looking for. This will sound more sensible if I give it as a charting example. If I teach you what auto block is, what fair value gap is, if you know that a fair value gap has three candles, consecutive candles with displacement, you can find hundreds of examples on trading you. But if I just give you a picture of a fair value gap and I say, okay, let's, keep, let's just do it like this. This is a fair value gap, right? There's a small gap between these candles and you just try to find these examples. So when price just moves like this, big fair value gaps, you will have no clue what to do. Because you don't have the logic that it's the gap between three candles. And you won't take those trades. Okay, so starting off with smart money reversals. Smart money reversal is a term used in market maker models, which is the high or low form which will never be taken out until the objective is met. And there's a perfect way to predict this. Perfect way. I will teach that in the upcoming lectures. Now we have to learn the key points in market maker and how it starts and how it ends. We have a buy side of the curve, initial accumulation, we have a low, we have a smart money reversal, we have a low risk buy, expansion with a breaker block, price expands again from another breaker block, most in the silver bullet hour, accumulation, takes out the highs or the lows and we have the sell side of the curve, which can be example by the pick blue. Now, this chart is from ICT, you can see, Inner Circle Trader. What do you see here? Think of these as like mountains, okay? And you see those end shapes in here. Remember the breaker blocks I mentioned? End shapes? Now you can see them more clearly here. Now, here, there's no candles. But what do you see? Oh, a classic downtrend. And here we start going up, but we also have a downtrend inside that. Why? Because we have a low here, we take that low out, fair value gap, touch it, rally up. You can imagine things like that. And it's perfectly normal. You can learn it like this. You can draw, you can match the images. They will always, every single time, I can challenge you. Show me your market maker examples. Perfect market maker examples will be exactly like this. Exactly like this. A market maker buy model will also have a market maker sell model inside of it. But the bigger time frame, if it's bullish, we will continue going up. But there are retracements, which are called the sell side of the curve. Now, let's go with the quarterly theory first. If you ex remember, <coughs> sorry. I mentioned in my quarterly theory video, we have Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Now, in this, Q1, accumulation, manipulation, distribution, continuation. Does this look like any candle movement you've seen so far in this whole video? Yes. Do you see this move? Accumulation, manipulation, distribution. It's the same thing. The time frames are just numbers. It's just numbers on your screen. You have to understand that everything is fractal. Price is exactly the same. This is your yearly monthly profile. This is your weekly. We have Monday, Tuesday makes the high low of the week, and then we sell off. Write down the snugget. Tuesday makes the high or low of the week. In some cases, it can be Wednesday. How? I will teach you in the upcoming lectures. Now, we can also do an intraday basis, a daily candle, Asia, London, and then we have a sell-off. Easy. Now, this is a more visual example. Now, remember, when I said we will have a higher time frame for a value gap or PDRA, price takes out a low, starts accumulating, we rally up, we start making these first accumulation lows, expand again, break a block here, you see the end shape, come down, touch it, and then we expand higher, take out the highs. Rally up again, touch the PDRA, and then displacement. 
Once the swing low is broken, we have our 2022 model entry, fair value gap. You can use my auto block model. There's an auto block here. You can also use a unicorn breaker block present here. You see the end shape broken down, inversion breaker block. And you can take a low risk sell here. Why? Because you have a really small stop loss and you're going to catch this whole big move all the way down till here. Let's assume you missed that move. Price goes down. We take out a high. We have another fair value gap. Price is taking out internal buy side. What's next? External sell side liquidity. We go from internal to external. We take out that buy side liquidity into the fair value gap. Your entry should be here. Stop loss must be here. Why? Just to play safe. Do your risk management. Enter, target, and you target the lows again. Now, again, here where the time comes in handy, you have silver bullet. Makes a fair value gap, price touches it, and then we rally roll. Now, this low resistance liquidity, I mentioned this word at the start of the video. Rewind and watch that phrase again. You see these lows? They're like so smooth. It's just like a trend line. You can draw a trend line perfectly here. These become liquidity. The price straight slashes through them. Now we have a sell example. We had a buy example here. We had buying, 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 and then we sell. So that's a market maker sell model. Now we have a scenario in which price will buy after we have taken out all this. We're done with the sell move from here. We've done, we've done this sell move and now we're going to start going up. Now, again, higher time frame PDRA, fair value gap, or order block, or anything. Price comes down. Again, we do a break of structure. Unicorn model entry, low risk buy, go up. We take out the sell side again, internal liquidity taken out, into the fair value gap, rally up. Fair value gap goes down, into the silver bullet, rally up, take out the original consolidation. There will always be consolidation once we take out an external range liquidity. Here's how it will look on your charts now. Accumulation, it's hard to identify at first, but you will get used to it. Expand, come down, take out the lows into a fair value gap, a small fair value gap here, but we touch it. This is the same thing happening here. Take out the lows, small fair value gap, rally up. Rally up. What's happening here? Close below the swing low. With a fair value gap, price touches it here, comes down. Miss that entry, here's another fair value gap. Price comes here, touch the order block, rallies down. Which part of this? That's your here. Price makes out a high into in a PDRA, order block. Breaks a low, makes a fair value gap, touches it. If you miss this entry, you can take this entry. Intermediate term high entry. Which is this. We take out the high and then we rally lower. This is your intermediate term high entry. We take out the high and then we rally lower. Now, here's a market maker sell model happening. Here's a market maker buy model happening. We take out the original consolidation, rally up, fair value gap, touch it, go up. We come back down again to take out the lows, rally up, touch the fair value gap, rally up until we take out the highs. Objective is taken. We trade into the fair value gap, which is left open. Rally down, close below the swing low, fair value gap, touch it barely, come down, fair value gap, touch it later on, intermediate term, in, intermediate term high entry, and then we rally lower. Watch this video in a lower speed and you will understand it. Now, here's a chart example. This is not my picture, it's from Sniper667, but this was a clean example I could find. It's from February. 11 2023 on trading view now you see we have our fair value gap on a higher time frame price comes down touches it and we have a smart money reversal oh uh, what's happening here displacement take out a high what did we learn at the start of our lectures what did we learn i'm giving you time to still think it out take out the low displacement up and we leave a fair value gap. 
Interesting, right? Same thing on a live chart. Price touches that, respects this, rally up. We have lows, take out the lows, rally up again. We have a fair value gap here. We had all these trend line liquidity taken out, fair value gap. We touch that fair value gap and then we go lower. Why? Fair value gap was left open. We haven't touched it. Again, we touch it, take out the low, see the red line, rally up, touch the fair value gap, leave this gap open. This is a breakaway gap, this green candle. It's a breakaway gap. I will teach that in the upcoming lectures. Go up, take out the lows again, intermediate term low entry. Enter here again, target the original consolidation here. This, screenshot this, I will remove this on the side. Screenshot this and remember this. Original consolidation, lower excel, accumulation, turtle soup. I will teach them the next lecture with standard deviations. Smart money reversals, low risk buy, fair value gap, rally up, take out the highs, touch touch the fair value gap which we left open here, go down from that retracement, take out lows inside this buy model into a fair value gap and then we rally up. Same thing which happened here, touch the fair value gap, lows, take them out, into the fair value gap, then we rally up. Another example, this is from my charts. We have a fair value gap. This is your monthly fair value gap. Smart money reversal happened here. There was an SMT here. Fair value gap, touch it, rally up. Fair value gap, broke it, touch it, rally up. This fair value gap was already filled, which we had to rally down. So that was your intermediate term high entry for sales for market maker sell model. This was your buy model here. And then we rally up to take out the highs. Under the example, original consolidation, down, smart money reversal, fair value gap, fair value gap, touch it, rally up, come down, fair value gap, take out all these lows, intermediate term low entry, this is another low risk buy, LRB is low risk buy, is when you are nearest to the swing low and there's a fair value gap, we can have a smallest stop loss, you can imagine. Rally up, accumulate again, take out the lows one last time. And then we rally up to take out the highs. Why did we accumulate here? There were fair value gaps here, which were acting as a speed pump. Oh, that's a no good. Write that down. Now, expanding knowledge on PO3 and AMDX using daily time frame. That's the most basic market maker explanation. That's enough for lecture two. And now your homework is to backtest this. That's it, folks. This was a lecture which had a lot of words. I never explained market maker models like this, but I have never taught in such great depth like this. I hope you guys watch this lecture. You watch it more than one time because you will need to in order to understand it properly. Everything I shared here is nothing is being kept like I'm not gatekeeping anything. I just taught you every single thing you need to know as your basics for your lecture too. Every single thing. I didn't hide anything. I taught you the basics of PD rays. I taught you the basics of how to market maker, how market maker models work, what to expect for high probability PD rays, how to identify them. So a like or any good comment will mean a lot to me because I'm putting in my work, I'm putting in my knowledge here on YouTube, sharing it for you guys. If you guys share it with your other friends, they are struggling, it will help them too. Because if they are struggling, they don't know these things. They need these guidance. Either teach them yourself or send them my lectures so they can watch. Make sure they make notes. And if you guys have any questions or you guys struggle with anything, need guidance, you guys can text me on Instagram, which is... Um, let me type that out at the rate ICT universe dot FX that's my Instagram you guys can contact me there that's enough for market maker lectures I hope this was helpful for you all I talked really quick I know but I had to make the lecture 
to the point not doing any ranting so you guys can get as much information as you can lecture 3 will be out soon but if this video gets like good comments likes or anything what does that mean to me likes and comments don't mean anything to me in terms of YouTube they show me how many people watched the lecture how many people benefited from it and how many people came back to it so if you're watching it second time just comment I came here second time so the other people have motivation that okay this person came here two times already why have I only watched it one time and you can for a fact agree with me on this that the more you watch the more you're identifying new things every time in my videos in this video alone I said nuggets so many times but I hidden few nuggets I have hidden them you probably will see them once you watch it five six seven times I said it but I haven't shown it properly in this video try to find those nuggets comment them if someone finds the main nugget which I hid in this video you might get maybe a gift from me and this is on YouTube as a record so that's it folks for lecture 2 I hope you have a really great time have a great month of March have a safe trading if you are trading safe trading if you're just making notes and if you're my student you're definitely making notes you're not trading right now enjoy your time with your family study hard take care of your health go out for a run once a while to refresh your mind because my lectures are not here to just teach you trading I'm here as a father as a brother as a mentor to guide you all until next time folks take care have a great month